Hello and welcome back to Farming Simulator 22 and Bally Spring. Right, so, bit of an update on the tarpaulin that I put down. So if you watched the last episode, you'll know that I put the tarpaulin down to store whole crop silage bales and we're also going to be storing grass silage bales. Now, I got sent an edit of that mod and the good thing about it is it's now incorporated the new features that have recently come to the game where we can store bales. So, I don't know if you've seen that, but with the 1.9 update that's hit, and with obviously the new DLC that's come with all the balers and stuff like that, um, yeah, we've got this new feature where we can buy um, sheds, storage areas where they take in bales, and it's automatically placing them down. I guess it's really good for console players, because obviously you've got the count, uh, is it slot count or something like that, where you can only have so many things present on the map, so many items that you can purchase. Well, having that many bales open in storage for example that you can access yourself would probably raise that count and make it more difficult for you to have additional features so the storage points are really good because obviously it takes that count away now i like the idea of this because as you saw in the last episode manually loading bales and unloading bales can be a bit of a pain especially when i'm trying to find a good way of doing it with the wrapped bale because i want to try and do it realistically as you know so that means i can't pierce the bale so we can't use the spikes which is really useful and at least out this uh, and it's still got it on lease. Uh, it's only cheap, so I'll probably keep it until we buy one or find an alternative. And it actually worked okay at times, but other times it was a bit tricky, especially when I'm unloading off the trailer. Not loading on, but unloading off. I kept knocking them off. Um, so this is going to be good because we can just pretty much just drive through and they'll spawn in. And when we want them again, they'll spawn out. So what I've decided to do to make it really organized and color-coded and all that kind of malarkey is I've got black tarpaulin on the ground over here. Anything that's a wrapped bale that we're going to use the, the black wrapping for, that's going to be grass silage, so they're going to be over here. Over here, we've got a green tarpaulin, and I'll probably wrap anything that's whole crop silage in the green color. And then if we ever decide to wrap some maize silage, for example, we can use another color, but we're, we're going to put that in the pit. But I just thought I'd show it off because I've had to change the layout, obviously, because the way I had it before, it wouldn't have worked properly because the spawn points in front and I kind of stacked them. So it would have messed the whole game up. So I've, I've rearranged, uh, but it looks pretty decent. The only thing I will say is the X's are a little bit ugly. So maybe it'd be nice to have the option to turn them, turn them on and off, but I don't think we can. Um, and I know what it's telling us, we can't walk into the area, it's kind of like, you just, it's, there's like an invisible wall. So the X's are there, I guess, to tell you about that. And if you walk away from it, the distance, you know, you can, they do vanish. They're not always there, it's just when you get close. But I like the option to turn that on and off again, um, just because of the immersion, I guess, to the game. So it would be nice if we have that feature. But overall, I like it, it's really nice, thanks for the edit that's sent to me. Really appreciate that, Taz. Um, so yeah, that'll definitely come in use. Right, so let's get cracking. I think the last few episodes have been a lot of faffing, a lot of talking, and uh, yeah, we're about to that point now. We've got quite a bit to do, so let's get started on it. Um, first thing we're going to do is we're going to move some cows. I have gone and changed the game it's, uh, day cycle, so I think we're running five days seasons. I've now gone down to three. And the reason I went with five originally is because I thought the feed is going to be consumed too quick. Now, the reason I've gone down to three is because the actual feeding troughs allow me to put quite a lot of feed in. So it's not as much of an issue. So we may as well reduce it down to three, which is where I like to play. Normally, I'd, I'd want three-day seasons. Um, I think that's kind of the sweet spot. So we're going to give it a go. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move 15 of the heifers into the calf pen because... They're going to allow us to have some, hopefully, slurry and a bit more manure. 
This is a tight squeeze around here. This really is tricky. Have to be careful here. Probably need a smaller animal. Yeah, probably need a smaller one, don't I, for this? Because this is uh, difficult to get through. We'll do it, we'll do it. Just probably need a bit of a better angle with that. There we go. So, I've already started producing manure. You can probably just see it there. And I have actually given two more straw bales, so we only actually got three left. But the good thing about it is we're not going to need that straw for anything else. Only for applying straw. And we can only do that on this one um, animal enclosure, which is this one. So... Yeah, we're going to try it out. I think we can we can handle it and we can do more with it because then we're going to produce more slurry. Well, we're not even producing slurry really with the calves. They're not producing much at all. And out here, we're not producing any at all. No slurry, no manure. Um, yeah, it's, it's one of them. And you can see that the grazing mod's working really well because you can see the grass has gone down quite a bit. Do you feel like that is digging into the ground? Low into it. There we go. We got we got seven in anyway. There we go. We're getting somewhere. We're getting somewhere. So we just want it to lift up now and hope that front end does. Yeah, it's got stuck. There we go. That is much better. So. Yeah, the Ford's too low down on that hitch to uh, haul these. Uh, but at least we're doing this. This is going to help us out. And just swing that around. I might just keep this over this side so it's not as much moving. Maybe even if it's just in that field. Do you want to move the seven animals? Yes, please. And there we go. So that's seven in there. And we're going to get another seven here now. Just to make our life easier, we may as well reverse. So the reason I'm doing this is just because for manure and slurry, really. There's no other reason why we do this. Um, if we have a look at the feed itself you can see that the heifer's feed is going down slowly i'm sure from what mark said to me when he did the uh, grazing edit for me it is all three pastures that are taking feed now the lambs is confirmed that's not gone down at all if anything it's maintaining really well calves are shot up because we only fed the 8,000 liters of tmr that i purchased right in the start of the first episode so that's gone up now this is going to go down and i'm just hoping what it's grazing can maintain it by me putting the extra 15 heifers in it's going to be difficult but i'm hoping so because the reason why i'm not moving them all is because we need some of this feed in here to, you know we need to consume some of this feed there's 104 thousand liters in there whereas we've only got 33,000 in here but I'm you know trying to balance it so I can get some slurry and kind of bring that manure up I have also decided as well when it comes to fertilizer that I am going to be using liquid fertilizer on any crop field that we grow and solid fertilizer on our grass fields because I find that to be the most realistic way uh, that farmers in you know out in the real world apply nitrogen or fertilizer so we're going to try and stick to that which I think is the best thing to do as well. So there we go, we've got 29 in there, and we've got 16 out on the field, so that's 14 that we've moved over, and I think that should be fine. We don't need to do the extra one. We'll leave 16 out in the field, grazing, and then we'll leave the 14 in there with the calves. They'll hopefully give us a bit of slurry as well, because none of them are producing milk, that's the thing. They're just feeding at the moment. They're costing us money, they're not producing anything, so we may as well try and maximise on that and get ourselves, you know, something from that which is slurry and manure it's close so that's the first thing out of the way job done see if we see a bit of a difference and we'll keep an eye on the feed just to make sure we maintain because it is important that we keep them all fed and happy now that we've gone to three days they're going to consume more in a day than what they would before 
that's definitely something we need to keep an eye on. So let's get down to this field over here. We are going to start doing what we need to, which is basically spread a line. And then after that, we're going to direct seed in some wheat. And that's going to be our whole crop silage field, which I said in the last episode was the first field we're going to focus on just because everything else we've got time to plant. Whereas this we want to try and plant as soon as so we can harvest it or chop it basically, mow it down for whole crop silage bales as soon as it, we can basically. So that's why we're in a bit of a rush with this one. So over here I've got everything set up. You can see that I have been busy on this field. I had mulched it. And I also got my disc harrow out. So that's all sorted. So the field's in a pretty good state to start off with. So if we just go up to our fields um, and have a look over here, you can see that it's in the seedbed state and it's also been mulched. So pretty much ready to go. Just need a bit of lime on it because if we have a look at precision farming, you can see that even though it's got a pretty decent score because we chopped some grass and yeah, the full level of nitrogen and all that kind of stuff, tillage wise, it's not very good and the pH again is not very good. So we're going to put some pH down. Then we're going to focus on the planting, which is going to be direct seeding. After the direct seeding, we can do some rolling because we roll after planting to get that little bit extra. And then it's it's going to be fertilizer. But for fertilizer, we're going to try something a little bit different. What we're going to do is going to swap out this direct seeder. Well, it's not even a direct seeder, that's the thing. It's just got a power harrow on, but I don't think it will classify as a direct seeder. So we're going to swap it in for another version, same width, a bit cheaper, so we should get some money back. Cause the money at the moment is 3,800. Same with the mulcher. I found a mulcher that's probably bigger, but will bring us some money back because it's a cheaper version. So we're going to take both of these in um, and get them swapped out for something else. And then when we do the planting, we're going to be using Proceed. We're going to make ourselves some... Um, we're going to make ourselves some um, tram lines to actually work on when we're fertilising. Now, we haven't got a sprayer. It's the one thing I haven't bought, but we're going to lease one out, and I've decided which one we're going for because we will need to know about that when it comes to planting in, and it's going to be a 15-metre width. So we've pretty much got everything weighed up. And yeah, all we need to technically do now is get some lime spread on the ground this is going to go down really quick it always does it's going to be one of them jobs where we keep going back to get some more lime in the system but luckily it's not a massive field you know it's not huge but it's just you know a lot of traveling to and from to try and get the lime ideally we'd want a massive spreader on the back that can hold a lot but where we are right now, we, we just can't afford that. We can't. Maybe if we had 2,000 capacity, that would be better. But, you know, it's doing the job. That's the main thing. So I think this will be a good time for me to stick in the time lapse. We'll get this field done. Obviously, a lot of travelling to and from, but we'll get it done. And then we'll move on to going to the shop, getting the right equipment we need to do the next bit.
and there we go field is lined up pH is perfect as you can see in the bottom right so we were aiming for seven with the silty what's it called silty clay yeah the whole map is silty clay by the way right so we're just heading down to the store now I've got follow me enabled I'm taking the cedar now that front weight I've noticed a few times now we do need a more powerful front weight it is quite hefty I think it's 1.1 so it's technically 1.1 tons but we probably need something better we really do because I've noticed a few few issues now where this thing's bobbing up and down I mean it is only a small base like f small frame on this tractor anyway um, traffic might be a problem here with follow me but we'll see yeah so we're gonna have to look at, into that definitely because let's get the size of that tool on the back and we're lifting it up so we can travel with it and it's gonna cause a few issues in itself um, slow tractor there there's a car here so we'll just let these come past uh, but yeah, I was talking about the actual uh, precision farming soil map for this map, uh, Bally Springs. It's all silty clay, and I did get a message from someone in my Discord offering to sort that out and uh, change it for me, which would have been perfect, but the problem was that I'd have to start a new save game, and I feel like I'm well into the series now, so I'm not going to do that, but it can be done. And if you do want to know anything about that, I'd recommend jumping into my Discord server. Uh, and the guy's name's Noel. He's got quite a lot of knowledge, so if you ask in there, someone will definitely direct you. And probably help you out so if you are interested in sorting that out and starting a new save game or if you are about to start a save game on it and it'd be a perfect time to try that out it's something i probably would have done because i do like a mixture it's all silty clay now i don't know if that's just true to the area which if it is then fair play to the map maker for being realistic in that regards but yeah, it's one of them if you want to try it and have a bit of a mixture look at all them people pop in there quite a busy spot on the map that is is he going to walk across We'll beep him just so he knows we're here anyway yeah let's go let's go get this sorted out finally we need a proper uh, yeah we need a proper direct cedar and we also need to get a better mulcher I find that that one's quite problematic so I think if we just bob it about here oh, and we'll sell these you see but I do need this guy to or a lady I think it's a lady driver whoa flying around them corners flying in there love there we go let's sort this out let's see if we can make a bit of money from this so we're at 3813 right now I wonder what we'll be left with if, we're, if we have a higher bank balance after we've bought the two items that we're replacing then it's actually turned out to be a good deal so let's repair it and we're also going to repaint it because I was told that that can have a difference so we're going to sell this for 14,737 there we go happy days is the front weight still on? yes it is so let's go over here and we'll just park her up and then finally we're going to sell this now this is two actually components it's not just the one like I said it's separated so if we just drop it there you'll notice in a minute it's it's kind of like the power harrow and then the, the cedar itself where's the thing there it is so you can see there it's a uh, it is uh, yeah separate so they both don't need repairing but we can repaint them both and I might even sell this you know and go with a bigger one let's see how much money we're left let's see if there's one we need to look if anything's better than the 1700 but yeah let's sell this we're gonna sell that we're at 50,000 there we go well, let's go buy ourselves what we need fingers crossed we can find something that's going to fill the void that we've just made so first things first mulches now I did find one in here that actually is a little bit bigger so we're at 4.7 that's 6 meters it's only 70 horsepower now it isn't you know don't get me wrong this isn't the, the prettiest mod in the world but it does the job it definitely does the job so why not? Well, we start off, we'll get it like that. And, um, looking for a mulcher, I'd say that probably that's a better design and look. And colour-wise, can't go wrong with the red. I, I think I've got my roller in red, so let's go with the green. Why not? John Deere can use that. Look pretty good. So 4,700 for that. Straight away, cheapest chips. What's cheaper than this one? 
16,800. I think we sold it for about 14,000, I think it was. So we're already up on that. And then the cedars, I've looked through this list here and because we're obviously, this is the one I had before and we're looking for one that has um, this one here, for example, this no-till. It does state here, these machines are used to seed crops like wheat, barley and canola. Additionally, this cedar offers the possibility to seed directly. And then the brackets, you can see that it says no previous cultivating or plowing is necessary. Now that's the trigger point that in my head says, right, this is a direct cedar and it's, you know, you're going to be sound with it and it's going to work a treat. Now, the one that I think is probably best for us is this aggro. This one here, it's three meters and the one we sold is three meters. This holds a hundred, a thousand liters, one, two, five, and it works at seven miles per hour in the field. This one, however, works at 11 miles an hour, so that's better. Even though we're going uphill, we're probably going to be doing about three miles an hour. My only issue is it has 180 horsepower requirements, but it holds a lot more. Now, I've got a 200 horsepower tractor. Technically, I should be able to run this. Yes, I know I'm going to go up the hill. It's going to be tricky, but do you know what? I'm going to give it a go. I'm going to take the risk and see if we can do it. We've got the 20 horsepower extra. If it means we go about three miles an hour along the way, so be it. At least we've got ourselves a nice direct cedar here, which is the most important part. And just to confirm, as you can see, no previous cultivating is required. And it'll leave us with a bit of cash as well. So let's do it. Uh, they're all reds and they're all greens, so we'll just keep it as it is. There we go. So let's have a look at um, a weight, because I have noticed, like I said, that uh, yeah, that's only 200, so 1.5. The weight that I've got currently is just not big enough. It really isn't. It's not heavy enough for what we need. I'm looking for maybe a 1.5. I mean, that's a weird weight. That is a weird weight. Right, so there we go. Everything is purchased. I even went with a one and a half ton weight. So we're up on the one we've currently got. Um, and this is our main tractor. So we need, we, we pretty much need to, you know, get this kitted out for what we need to do. So let's repair it. And it's, it's 1736 if we, yeah, we may as well. Let's uh, sell that and that's it, job done. We're now sitting at 14,000. So we've done well there. We've increased our money in our account and replaced the items that we sold with alternatives. And most importantly, we've got a direct cedar. Look at the size of that weight, it's a beast, but we need it, we really do. We wanna stop the wheelies, Not ideal. And we can have fertilizer in this as well. That is interesting. That really is. Hmm. That opens up quite a lot, you know. I'm not going to do it this time because I do want to use the proceed. And I don't know if I'll need to go over it the second time. So we'll, we'll carry on doing what we're doing now. We'll just put seeds in. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there. We'll go from there. But it's a bit of a hefty piece of kit now, isn't it? Compared to what we were running before. It really is. I think this front weight's going to help though, because there's been a few tools that I've used now with certain tractors where they've been bunny hopping. Come on, buddy. We ain't got all day. Stop faffing. There we go. So, I'll head back to the field. I'll park everything up that I need to, especially the tractor behind me, the mass. Uh, yeah, the massy. We're going to have to park that up with the mulcher, but I do need to go and get some seeds because we're obviously using the realistic cedar mod which if anyone wants to know i have seen a few comments about where to find it it's on lsfm basically his website it's the guy that called farmer andy well-known modder from back in the day every fs game he does a map called hoff bergman that really is quite unique it offers a lot of features you'll probably never see on most maps within fs22 it stands out it really does it's a cracking map uh, it's PC only, but all he has his own website, and on there, it's LSFM, you'll find mods that are just tailored and custom to what he's kind of used mainly in the, in the map itself, but sometimes he has some, uh, yeah, blinded mods, they really are, so definitely go check out that website, keep it as one that you travel to, to look at your mods when you're going on your mod hunts. Uh, personally, I use King Mods, um, Mod Hub, obviously, and yeah, the LSFM website i don't use any others because a lot of the time they don't directly link to the original source and i think that's quite important because if you don't use the original link uh, where the mod is uploaded to then the modder doesn't get any kickback or any reward for all the hard work they've put in so it's important to me 
that you know the mob websites we use as a community is legitimate and giving back to the modders and the, and the good thing about king mods it always links to the original link it's a great place because all the all these mods it's like a, a search site really for mods all in one place so it's easy to find mods from king mods and uh, you, you know in all fairness as well the guide has a really good youtube channel that runs it so you definitely go check that out as well um, and he does a kind of review of the mods best mods in the week and stuff like that on his channel um, but yeah go go check out king mods if you're not used to that it is obviously pc only mods that i'm talking about here uh, but worth worth a look at and like i said it also always directly links to the original link to that mod that the mod has put up so that it's always going to be you know legitimate and proper and as well if you see a mod on there that's maybe a stolen asset and it shouldn't be on there the good thing about it report it to him and it'll be straight off there as well so uh, you can't fault king mods Woozer. Just about stopped him. Right, so here we are with a bag, well, sorry, a pallet of wheat seeds that we're going to take down with the, obviously, the Taliandler Merlot. Um, and this should be enough, I'm hoping. It's a thousand litres of wheat seeds. Normally we don't use that much, but if we do, I think I'll have another pallet of this. Um, but we'll have to keep an eye on the, the seeds, you know, the seed usage, because going to need a lot of grass seeds and I've actually only got two pallets which makes me think we might need more because we are going to be replanting into all our grass seeds into, into all our grass fields sorry so yeah that is one that probably does need looking at but let's go and give this to the seeder and it should automatically then sense that we're using wheat seeds and yeah change to wheat so we don't even have to faff about with that which is nice to see it's something that probably should be in the base game let's be honest you buy the seeds for what you want to plant and so on there we go didn't notice that let's just uh... that should be enough and then we can refill there we go wheat seeds it is so like I said we're going to be using pro seed for this one now it does go on to um, GPS which we have enabled on this tractor so we're not going to be using fertilizer so I'm going to just take that off that can stay on we're going to be using auto and we we are going to lease out a 15 meter spray so we need to make sure we say that and it's going to be one in every five track now the headland pass is where it's probably going to be a little bit tricky now what I'm going to do is I'm going to first off I'm going to start by putting this onto manual and doing my headland pass. Well, passes, I'm probably going to do about three, to be honest, because we're at th uh, three metres, aren't we? So, yeah, I'd say th that's probably about right. I'm um, just hoping we've got enough seeds as well. A thousand isn't that many. Just look it now, does it? Well, I'm hoping so. We'll find out. We'll find out. Let's get this out of the field because we're going to need to. We'll shut the gate as well. But as soon as we've planted this, there's only going to be fertilizer and rolling left to do in this field, and then we just wait it out. Hopefully, don't get too many weeds. And if we do, well, hopefully we can use a manual weeder. If not, we'll lease out the sprayer anyway, get some herbicide on it, um, which will take a bit of a hit on the yield. But environmental score won't be that bad. I think it's actually better to do. Yeah, if we're going to use herbicide, we may as well use the spot spray technology. But it's crazy price. It really is a crazy price. Right, so we'll leave it on manual for now. And we'll just start this up and get planting our wheat. And we'll keep an eye out on that weed. Uh, keep an eye out on the seeds. It's not going down too much. Probably going down to the point where I might need another bag, but we'll find out. But the main thing is we are planting in just noticed as well our seed rate is high so silty clay not only is it less yield also demands a lot more seed so not ideal at all let's let's have a quick look at that yeah variable seed rate is high um, not good at all but it is what it is main thing is to get it done get this planted in and then as soon as we've done the headland passes we can start doing the the GPS up and down rows um, which we can then do some tram lines in.
Right, so two headland passes are completed. I think that should be enough. I kind of really want to get started on these uh, GPS rows. So the first thing we're going to do is going to switch it back into auto mode on Proceed. We set it to 15 meter because that's the sprayer that I'm going to lease out. I now want to line this up um, so I can do some decent enough rows. And I'm kind of just going to start it off on this side because this might calculate as row number one. It is actually seeing track two of five, which kind of helps, really. That's uh, great news. So, first things first, GPS menu. Let's bring that up, eh? Uh, first, we need to activate the GPS. So, we're going to toggle that on. We're going to bring up the menu. We want to auto width so it knows that that is three meters, which I imagine 9.84 feet is three meters. I'm hoping so, anyway. Um, we'll put the lines on for the meantime, just so it helps us out. I don't need to do any of that at the moment. We're going to set our A track, or A point, should I say. Um, yep, I know that. I need to do my A. Buddy bud. So I think it's down on the ground. It must be. Let's have a look. I can't see it yet. Um, that's a bit of a weird place to put the A, but we'll, we'll start it off because, yeah. For some reason, it's actually on there. And what I'm going to do is obviously turn on my cedar as well, because it may as well, if I'm going downhill, it should be good enough. Let's just try to set that again, and let me want A. I'm hoping it's done it from that point. Let's see if this works. There you go. A's on the ground there, so that's much better. We are taking a straight route here, so if we set it again, that's the route that we're going to take, which I'm fine with. Uh, the snap angle, we could have, I don't know if there is a snap ang angle on this. Um, show us dots, prefer that. Um, there isn't a snap angle point, is there? Which I probably would have preferred to put to a train angle. Mm. Yeah, we'll keep it like that. It's easy enough to do. It really is. Um, let me just get my stream deck close to me so we can toggle the steering on and off. And we also then can start our proceeds. So the way this is going to work is it's not going to be doing fertilizer. And you'll notice when I get to track maybe three, I think it is, you'll see that it will leave a gap for some tires to go down. You'll see two red lines and that should automatically then apply our tram lines. That is the way should work so we'll find that out but coming up hill is going to be a lot slower than going downhill and the way I'm going to do this because of the turn I'm going to miss a row in between hoping that should be the best way but we'll find out we'll just keep going down the seeds are getting used a lot quicker it is even more it's another problem to add to the the task that we set ourselves by doing this um, yeah it is a bit tricky probably did need to do another headland let's be honest if so what we can do is do one yeah, we'll do we'll do an extra one at the end. Let's swing her around. So you can see now this is going to actually leave on this row here um, a gap for us. So we're going to create tram lines in a second. Let me just reverse this and get this spot on. He says. So that should be now automatically set. Let's drop down our cedar, and what we should see is some tram lines being formed and you can probably just make out the difference there maybe just I can just make them out I don't know if you guys can in the video it's definitely there um, definitely obviously planted in and we've got a couple of tram lines it's probably better if I zoom out a little bit you might be able to just see the two tyre tracks there so we should see some tram lines which is good to see obviously because uh, we're going to need them we're going to try and play realistic tram lines are a thing especially when we're using sprayers and going through. So as we're crawling up this hill, creating our first tram line, which you can just tell, I'm certain of it, you can just make that out in the video. Um, there's two things I want to point out. First thing, I've seen a few comments on videos like this, survival series every now and again, where I get questions is, when's the next farm hand out? And if you're unsure when the farm hand series is usually uh, on YouTube, so the next video, it's always at the weekend. I always try and aim to get two episodes done every weekend. Now, that can fall from Saturday to Monday. 
Um, so really in between Saturday and Monday you'll see that there's two episodes uploaded ideally I want one episode on the Saturday and then one on the Sunday but sometimes with work it's you know it's a bit tricky to kind of commit to that so most of the time it's been working out recently where I have an episode on uh, for Saturday and then an episode on Monday so keep an eye out around Saturday to Monday you'll definitely see two episodes of the farmhands unless I state on my YouTube uh, community page where I kind of announced that maybe I'm away on a holiday or something um, and it might be um, a bit different that week so that's the first point the second point I'm gonna make I don't know if you've noticed at the start of my videos I have my G portal intro that's because I'm partnered with G portal and if you're interested in get your own server I highly recommend using my link in the video description. You'll get 10% off, so it's obviously beneficial for that because you'll save money. And G Portal are actually really, really good. They are highly recommended by a lot of the FS22 content creators, um, and that is, there's a reason for that. It's because what they do, they do it really well. It's really easy to set up um, a server for that, so if you want to play multiplayer with your friends, definitely recommend using G Portal, using my link to get 10% off. Because, like I said, it's the the interface itself is really useful um, online. It's quite easy to, to to get set up. So yeah, go check it out in the video description. Really would appreciate that, especially if you're aiming to get yourself a server with your friends or for any reason in particular. Um, yeah, definitely check that out. I am pretty certain I probably should have done that third headland, um, which is why I originally intended to do. But uh, yeah, kind of didn't do it, did I? But we'll do it at the end, I promise you. And we'll go back to manual mode. Two, if I skipped as well, the row is really what I should be doing here is not reversing and skipping a third row. But we're getting through the field. We're not doing too bad for a three meter drill. This is actually not bad at all. And uh, you know, it's uh, a lot of work to really do when you think about it, the amount of fields that I've got. How much work I'm going to have to put into this. You can see the, if you look now at the field where we've got a tram line, you can see it. It's clear as day now what we've uh, missed out. Ooh, we slid a bit there. That's not going to be very good for our GPS. Now, that top left-hand corner of the field up there is where I really do struggle. I hit a point where I'm going about three miles an hour. Um, we'll see how we get on. There is going to be places of this field where I do hit the three, yeah, the three um, miles per hour, which is not ideal. Right, so I think this will be a perfect time for me to stick in a bit of a montage. So we'll get this field done, and we might need to get some more seeds. If that is the case, I'll bring two big bags down from the shop. We'll just take the tallyandela down, and uh, park this up, and obviously continue after, because I think we're probably going to need quite a lot of seeds, aren't we, for this? And anything else we do as well after that so probably a good idea Yeah. 
I think that we've all had enough What keeps you up at night, yeah Make all the demons quiet, yeah We were built to thrive, yeah So there we go, it's all done. I did have to buy another, well I went with a big bag this time which was 2,000 litres of wheat seeds. And we've used quite a lot of it. We've actually used about 1,800, you could probably say around 1,800 litres of wheat seeds just for this one field. So yeah, having that increase really does make a difference. But we're done, and that's the main thing. It's all planted in, just need to roll now. But I don't know if you can just make out the tram line so there's one here going all the way down and there's one that i did right at the end going around the edge of the field so we've got some room coming into the field but you can just make them out and they should work a treat hopefully hopefully anyway with a 15 meter the way i've set it out but it's nice to have the one around the edge of the field just because it helps when entering the field and exiting obviously go round as well to the uh obviously you could start here go down to the bottom and then come up and turn around we're probably going to do a little bit of crop damage when we do them turns but it's nothing compared to what it would have been um and i do want to play with crop damage on so either way we're going to have to do something aren't we and the way that precision farming works is you need some green leaves on the crop it says it even specifies that it's best to do the fertilizer application in the spring months for wheat barley that kind of crop because of the fact you want to be using the sensors so the crop sensors that i have on this tractor just on the top left there you can just see it and there's one there as well so we're going to be using them and yeah by using them we need to make sure we have some green leaves for that to kick in so we do the right nitrogen um, application rate but overall i am quite happy with that that turned out really well definitely used quite a lot of seeds though and it's something that i'm probably gonna keep in mind now going forward because it's going to cost us quite a bit let's quickly just open this up and i'll show you the tram lines there is one going down there as well and one going down there but it's just not picked it up on on the map but you can see pretty much there what we've gone with probably better to look at it like that you've got the one around the edge and the three well it's one two three four five i believe there maybe one here as well that it's not picked up so the six tram lines going down the middle there for the field but overall pretty good it just needs rolling like i said so the whole field needs rolling um and if we go to precision farming we can look at this field field 101 ph is perfect nitrogen level is the next thing we're going to tackle but we're going to wait we are going to wait until the crops grow in a bit probably spring months like it states and the seed rate is high now it'd be interesting to see what the other crops come out as i think there's some that vary so i am expecting most of them to be high seed rate which is quite new to be honest i've ever i've only ever seen low and standard i think on other maps so you can see what impact it has by having that silty clay it really is a lot to take in so let's just have a look at this i uh, don't want to do that we want what we want to do is increase that that's it right so we're at level 78 environmental score uh, we've maxed out the nitrogen but that's from the last harvest but that will be maxed out again ph has not gone up yet but i expect it to do because we've got perfect ph weed control we're going to have to look at and tillage it has gone up but not all the way which is interesting i wonder if it's because it noticed that i did mulch and technically discard as well before i did use the direct cedar it'll be interesting to see what that's about um, but yeah overall it's a good score if i get 78 overall on all the fields i'll be quite happy with that that really isn't too bad ideally we want to try and max it out but it's going to be difficult to do anyway because we haven't got the spot spraying for the herbicide and so on uh, but yeah it's a good challenge either way it is a really good map excellent nice views bit of a challenge as well something different with the hilly terrain but i think on that note i am going to leave the video there so thanks for watching hopefully you've enjoyed it if you have please give the video a thumbs up because that does help my channel out and if you're new don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more videos just like this one on farming simulator